It is the time of the year again where we wish each other a Merry Christmas. Families gather gleefully to decorate their Christmas trees. Children excitedly open up boxes of gifts and passengers listen to jingle bells on the radio. Strangely enough, in our day and age, Christmas is no longer associated with the nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ. Over the years, this sacred time of the year has seamlessly transformed into a celebration that extols an imaginary, overweight man in a red suit. Yes, you guessed it, Santa Claus. Sadly, during the special time of the year for the faithful, Ho 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 sings loudly over Christ is born. But who is this mysterious man parents so badly want their children to believe in? If you watch further, you will be astonished to find out who actually hides behind this white bearded face. On March 15, 270 AD, a little boy named Nicholas was born in the city of Patara in the region of Lycia. He was the fruit of the earnest prayers of his wealthy yet pious parents, Theophanes and Nona, who were childless before the miracle birth of their son. As a vow of thanksgiving, they devoted Nicholas to God. From his very birth until the end of his life, this remarkable saint showed wondrous signs. While still in the baptismal font, he honored the Holy Trinity by standing on his feet three hours without support from anyone. And on Wednesdays and Fridays, he would not accept milk from his mother until after the evening prayers were completed. Throughout his childhood, Nicholas studied the divine scriptures, spending long hours in church during the day while praying and reading books during the night. Through an austere life of fasting, unceasing prayer and good deeds, St. Nicholas became a worthy dwelling place for the Holy Spirit from an early age. After being ordained a reader, then elevated to the priesthood, the youth began instructing his flock like a true elder, with wisdom that aroused deep wonder and respect among believers. St. Nicholas was especially known for his great kind-heartedness, which he displayed through the generous help he offered to the afflicted who came to him, and by distributing all his inheritance to the poor. One time, St. Nicholas saved a rich inhabitant of Patara from great sin. Times had fallen hard on him, and the man, losing his wealth and falling into desperation, planned to sell his daughter's bodies to be able to raise funds for the family. The saint, learning of the man's poverty and of his wicked intention, secretly visited him one night and threw a sack of gold through the window, or, as some believe, in one of the daughter's stockings, which she left to dry outside, an incident believed to be the origin of the Christmas stocking. Thanks to St. Nicholas, the man was able to arrange an honorable marriage for his eldest daughter. In another time, the saint decided to go on a pilgrimage to the Holy Land. Along the way, seeing the devil get on the ship and intending to sink it, Nicholas predicted a storm would arise that would threaten to kill the passengers. At the entreaty of the distressed pilgrims, he calmed the waves of the sea with his prayers and healed a mortally injured sailor who fell from the mast. When he reached the ancient city of Jerusalem, St. Nicholas visited all the holy places and worshipped God. He even decided to withdraw into the desert, but was stopped by a divine voice urging him to return to his native country. He returned to Lycia, and yearning for a life of quietude, entered into the brotherhood of a monastery named Holy Zion, which had been founded by his uncle. But the Lord again indicated another path for him. Nicholas, this is not the vineyard where you shall bear fruit for me. Return to the world and glorify my name there. So he left Patara and went to Myra in Lycia. Back in Myra, a new archbishop was to be ordained after the previous one's death. One of the elder bishops had a vision of a radiant man who told him that the one who came to the church that night and was first to enter should be made archbishop. His name would be Nicholas. So, obeying the radiant man's words, the bishop went to the church at night to await God's chosen one. The saint, always the first to arrive at church, was stopped by the bishop. What is your name, child? he asked. The saint replied, My name is Nicholas, Master, and I am your servant. After his consecration as Archbishop, Saint Nicholas remained a great ascetic, appearing to his flock as an image of gentleness, kindness, and love for people. This was particularly precious during the persecution of Christians under the Emperor Diocletian. 
Refusing to worship the idols, Bishop Nicholas, together with other Christians, was locked up in prison. Even in the dark cells, the archbishop supported and exhorted the faithful to endure the tortures with much joy. The Lord preserved him unharmed and, upon the accession of St. Constantine as emperor, St. Nicholas was restored to his flock. Despite his great gentleness of spirit and purity of heart, St. Nicholas was a zealous warrior of the Church of Christ. The saint destroyed the pagan temples and shrines in the city of Myra, shattering the idols and turning the temples to dust. Moreover, in the year 325, St. Nicholas was a participant in the First Ecumenical Council, during which he boldly stood up against the heretic Arius, shaming his false ideas with fiery zeal. Another act of courage St. Nicholas is known for is the deliverance from death of three men unjustly condemned by the governor who had been bribed. The saint boldly went up to the executioner and took his sword already suspended over the heads of the condemned. The governor, denounced by St. Nicholas for his wrongdoing, repented and begged for forgiveness. Until the end of his life, the beloved saint brought his diocese peace and blessings, sowing the word of truth, uprooting heresy, nourishing his flock with sound doctrine, and also providing food for their bodies. Only seeing his radiant face and being in his grace-filled presence provided comfort to those burdened with sorrow. He inspired the faithful on the path of virtue and moved even the unbelievers to the path of salvation. Having reached an old age, St. Nicholas peacefully fell asleep in the Lord. His venerable relics were preserved incorrupt in the local cathedral church and flowed with curative myrrh, from which many received healing. In the year 1087, his relics were transferred to the Italian city of Bari, where they rest even until today. After his death, the saint continually proved worthy of the title Wonder Worker for his countless miracles. More than once, the saint saved those drowning in the sea and provided release from captivity and imprisonment. In times of need, millions of Christians around the world have and continue to count on this holy man's powerful prayers. In Dutch, Saint Nicholas is pronounced Sinterklaas, which became the inspiration for the name Santa Claus. As he was believed to be the patron saint of children, people began to write folk tales and stories of St. Nicholas bringing toys to children on a sleigh led by reindeers. Throughout the centuries, the saint's true identity was caricatured to such an extent that the meek Greek archbishop became a laughing, rosy-cheeked character. Yes, unfortunately, tales of reindeer dashing through the sky and elf factories have put an honorable saint in the shadows. Now you may ask, what does Santa Claus or St. Nicholas have anything to do with Christmas anyways? Isn't Christmas meant to revolve around the joyful Bethlehem birth of Jesus? To our great sorrow, Christ has been and continues to be expelled from Christmas. Each year, talk of mistletoes and fruitcakes hinder the faithful from contemplating the truth of this feast. So let us keep Christ in Christmas and let us stop lying to our children. Instead, let us adopt the kindness, zeal, and generosity of St. Nicholas, who, I'm sure, would never want to be the center of attention during our Savior's joyful birth. Amen. Let heaven greatly rejoice, let earth make merry, the Lamb of God is born See